All right, all eyes have been on that blood moon. Let's set. Mm -hmm. We're and getting already, close. Yes, we're getting close. The maximum eclipse is at 6.55 a.m., but all morning long, it's been just beautiful, big, and bright. And the full moon right now is starting to turn that reddish-orange color. You can see that. This is uh, our photographer, Brian Shanahan, has been out on the beach. Thank you, Brian, for all these amazing shots. You can see the palm trees there. And there it is. Yeah, it's starting to make that appearance. And and uh, basically, we can also check out some live shots from some of our cameras right now. Our Fort Lauderdale camera, look at that gorgeous sunrise with the red hints of color there in the sky and some clouds out in the distance. You can follow me on Twitter at LisetteCBS4, by the way, as I will be tweeting your photos and also talking about this blood moon and the spring tides as well. Here's another live shot from our Miami Beach camera. We're starting to see the sky turning orange reddish here as well. And thanks to our viewers for sending in the photos. So here's what's happening. We have the lunar eclipse that's taking place as we speak. It's currently underway. And the reason that it is going to appear that reddish orange color, that's why they call it the blood moon, is because the lunar eclipse is going to be, is currently passing into the Earth's shadow. So as it does so, that's the reason that they consider it, or they call it the blood moon. And the eclipse, maximum eclipse time will be at 6.55 a.m. Thanks to Bev Armstrong for sending in this photo of the full moon earlier today before we had the cloud in the mix and before the eclipse happening. You can snap and share the view from your neighborhood to pics at cbsmiami.com. So the reason that we're going to also contend with some coastal flooding today and tomorrow is because of the full moon being in alignment with the sun and the earth. That astronomical alignment will lead to an extra gravitational pull, especially around the high tide times, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. around the usual spots around Miami Beach and Fort Lauderdale. So just keep that in mind. You do not want to drive through that salt water as it could damage your vehicles. Right now, we're looking at the radar and satellite. We're seeing some cloud coverage streaming in from the Gulf of Mexico. The winds are fairly light or calm, and we're waking up with the muggy 70s. 77 degrees in Fort Lauderdale and in Miami, 74 in Homestead, and the low 80s through the Keys. Tracking the tropics, there are a few areas I'm watching in the extreme southwestern Gulf of Mexico. This cluster of showers and storms has a low chance of development as it moves to the west, and we also have this disturbance north Northeast of the Lesser Antilles with a low potential of development. And this time of year, we do have to watch those areas. And of course, we'll keep you updated. Today, we will see spotty showers and some storms later this afternoon, although just a 20% chance of rain, not looking as wet or as soggy as yesterday. The high 87 degrees. Tonight, we will see lows fall to the upper 70s. And again, a passing shower can't be ruled out, mostly cloudy skies. If you are hopping on the water boating seas to for a light shop on the bays and a moderate risk of Currents. If you're planning on heading to the beach, keep that in mind. So the next few days, we'll see about a 20% chance of some showers as the breeze will be increasing. High pressure will be in control and highs will be near 90 degrees as we head into your weekend. But for the most part, we're going to start to see the rain chance decrease, but the wind will be cranking in and kicking into gear out of the east, guys.